Hello, my friends, and welcome. Sorry, that's me uh, clearly being a very professional right there, having music on in the background <laughs> where I couldn't see what's happening. There we go. This is a live stream, clearly. Uh, so welcome, my friends, to another stream of Adobe Live. I am your host, a good host, I hope, uh, designer based in London, Kieran Lewis. And on today, we have a very cool guy who is no stranger to Adobe Live, my friend, Chris Porter. Chris, man, how's it going, dude? Good, good. It's, it's, I'm pumped to be back, man. This is this is awesome. I love Adobe. Yeah. I'm pumped that you're my host. We're gonna have a lot of fun, brother. Uh, I've been, I've seen a few of your streams, and we've never had a chance to like cross bridges until now. So I'm, I'm super stoked for this, dude. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, it's man. Gonna we're gonna awesome. have a great time. Nice. Um, and just a little bit of housekeeping, my friends. Uh, I'm sure you hopefully you've been there before, but if you haven't, uh, massive warm welcome. Get any awesome comments that you've got for Chris in the chat i'll make sure i do my best to share them directly with him whilst he's doing his thing and also on a final note remember my friends this is design tuesdays on adobe live where each stream will be covering uh everything about graphic design learn about different techniques through creative cloud and also about illustrator as well uh so you're all very much welcome um and on a very very final note if you haven't already please do subscribe uh to our youtube channel and follow us at adobe live and on instagram too so, Mr. Chris, it's your time to shine, buddy. Would you like to introduce yourself and what you'll be working on for today's stream? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. So I'll just swipe over here um, and kind of show a little bit of work that I do. So my name is Chris Porter. I'm partner creative director at Baby Grand. We are a creative studio in Memphis, Tennessee. We specialize in brand identities, visual identities, uh, and we're a full creative suite. So we do everything from logo design, packaging, experience, uh, environmental design, campaigns, messaging. You know, we we have a really good time. And so this is a little bit of our work. I also do a lot of side hustles. Uh, one of my side hustles nice. is running a board game company. And that's what we'll be working on today is some of that, which is uh, going to be really fun. So you can see a little bit of the work here. This is our website, uh, babygrand.co. You can check out more about us, learn about mm. what we do, see a bit more like case study stuff. Um, on the site. Um, and then, you know, I'm on Dribble. I'm on Instagram. You can see more things like yeah. that. I'm a big soccer player, so, or football. Okay. Sorry, Kieran, my bad. You know, football. <laughs> Cross upon the seas, I love that. Yeah, 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 my bad, you know. <laughs> so, big football guy. Uh, cool. And I do a lot of branding in that area as well. So, but yeah. Nice. <clears throat> man, it's good to see your pedigree, man, on social. And it's I'm excited to sort of see you get into your, your design flow. Yeah, I'm pumped. So today, you know, we're going to be working on the brand identity for a board game concept that currently is being fleshed out called Temporal. It's a time travel board game. And so we're going to work on the branding for it. We're going to get into some icons. We're going to talk a little bit about how you can make board game design really user friendly and then we're going to do some little character boards. We've got some key art, and then we'll uh, make a board game cover. So we'll be that doing a lot cool. in a lot of short amount of time. <laughs> yeah, I'm pumped for this. I feel like as well, maybe because Christmas is gone, maybe folks met with family, friends, and board games is like the season to it. So we're coming off kind of nice high for this stream, actually. I feel like we're in the flow and ready to, to jump in. I can see folks already, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, sort of saying where they're coming in from. We've got our friends from Brazil. We've got Vlada. Um, mm -hmm. everyone coming through, Chris, Wade, Barbara, um, Robert, they're all here for you, dude. So, uh, jump ah, on you're ready. Awesome. Well, shout out to Brazil. I love, uh, Belo Horizonte. <laughs> I went there for the world cup. So let's go. Ah, jealous. The soccer or the football? There is. <laughs> Sorry. Right. I was a low, I was a low, 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 low block. <laughs> hey, hey, look, okay. You know, I... <laughs> for the football, right, for the football. There. Sorry, All right, sorry. so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get right into logo design. So our main focus is uh, creating a main primary logo for the game Temporal. Um, we'll try to do a couple, two different uh, styles for this, and then we will go into icons and character boards and stuff. I've got a little character art over here already pre-made uh, for the main character. Uh, I'll right. give y'all a little bit of a rundown as I sort of set up for the flow. So the board game is called Temporal. Uh, if I say temporal in the stream, that's just because, you know, I'm from the South and we just mess up words all the time. So uh, <laughs> forgive me if I uh, say the wrong thing. But nice. 
essentially the game is a cooperative game where everybody is going to be playing as one central character. And that character is going to be played by everybody in different phases of that character's life. So that character's name is Alex Zan, sort of a play on Alexander. And this is mm. him there. There'll also be sort of a board you can flip where you could turn out, you could be a, the female or the male version of Alexander, whatever you want to do. Um, and the various villains that you'll be able to play against all have different board game mechanics that mm they will be using in the game so one of them might be dice one of them might be cards one of them might be um you know meeples little wooden pieces and stuff like that and so huh? you'll want to be able to scale up and the game up and down as you see fit and mm -hmm. so you'll be able to manipulate time and it'll be really cool and when we kind of get into a little bit more of the icons and symbolism for each character, I'll talk more about it. But <clears throat> nice. that's a little bit of the background. What I'm doing here is something I like to do for every brand project. So I basically create three different sets for the, the word mark. I'll create a you know standard capitalized, then all caps and a lowercase. And I put mm -hmm. them all with the same standard just type to start. And then... Now, when I go in to check out some different fonts, I can see them in all different styles really quickly. Um, and then I can work on the tracking and everything for them. Mm. So one thing that I want to do for this game is I want to have a few different looks. I'm going to do some that are just standard font selection and then tweak those. And then mm. I, I want to have one where I just completely build it out from scratch. Um. And so I, I think that something really kind of bold would be nice with this. I'm trying to think mm. of uh, a good way to filter out fonts that I use is coming here to your your yeah. filters. Really enough, I'm quite new to. I don't know if you find I'm quite. Um, I mean, I've been there for a while that sort of um, feature, but I'm quite new to that, which is quite nice because you really kind of narrow down your selection. Because like, you could be here all day with fonts, and it's one of those ones where you just. I don't know if you have like a favorite that you have a go to font that you, type, you like to use Chris or are you more of a you kind of little browse around and see what's there and well you know it depends if I am doing a type for copy like for body mm. copy I have a few different favorite ones um mm. I license them every time I use them um Aonic here is one of my favorites RM New is a favorite okay. of mine for body copy yeah. and then Enter is one of the you know standard yeah. everybody like loves enter i don't i you don't use it that much i only use it sparingly okay, okay. um uh, but everybody loves them some enter so you know i don't i'm not gonna be a hater <laughs> we've got rash rash rationed fonts so i love that everyone's got like a it's always funny when we have these adobe lives and we always talk to designers doing different things there's always a it's good to explore but you always have those maybe two or three go-to fonts you just know it's gonna work for fonts it's gonna work for titles sorry or body copy and you never know but um yeah it's mm -hmm. good to explore and see what we've got to play with yeah, so I'm really liking kind of this funkiness of this. Like you can see there's some geom geometry going on and that's kind of the art style right now is like this geometric sort of bit. And okay. so because that's there and really bold, I don't think that, I think I'll probably either use the standard cap or the all cap for it. So mm. I'm going to go ahead and, sort of <clears throat> look at that one a little bit more i like how oops wrong one so when i well, what i'll do is i'll press option i'm on a mac so i can press option and use the arrow keys to work on you know that nice. kerning pretty easily um mm -hmm. and this is a tip i learned from amy and jen hood this isn't something you'll see right now but like let's say that i had kind of hanging uh fruit here i can use that and still um kind of basically shorten this area to make it where I can use my align tools and it won't have kind of hanging fruit on mm. the side of the, the letter there. But I really like that funkiness of that one. I think that we could do a couple tweaks to some of the letters and it could be interesting. We'd have a lot of issues with this, this sort of section, like, because these are so straight line and this is curved, this will be an interesting thing to play with. Mm. 
I think that's um, that's always quite a cool thing with Illustrator where you have that flexibility, you know, where you can really kind of go in and, and manipulate fonts and, and change them to kind of how you see fit, which is quite cool. Yeah, I, I love the fact that you can, that it's just shapes, you know, whenever I first was teaching, because I, I taught myself how to use all the programs. I didn't go to school for oh. graphic design. So just okay. learning all that, I had to teach myself really simple things about them. Um, okay. Yeah. I feel like you're reading my nut because that's because uh, again because we've met for the first time, Chris, on these stream. Like I was quite curious to know your kind of back. I mean, we're going to a bit more depth, I'm sure, in the stream. But again, you mentioned you were self-taught, um, which is always interesting because it's like a range of folks that we have on the stream. But um, that's cool mm -hmm. to know, man, how you kind of worked and found mm -hmm. your way into this, which is nice. Yeah, I. So it's really interesting. I basically went. I went to school for journalism, advertising, and mm -hmm. I wanted to just tell stories. That was kind of my thing. And when I went to college, Twitter was like just kind of getting going, which is kind of crazy to think about. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, everyone was saying like, journalism's going to die, you know, newspapers are going to be dead. And that sort of kind of happened, but mm. um, not really to the extent people thought they just kind of evolved. And mm. so... What I did was we had this big senior project where I led a team doing like marketing stuff. And one of my teammates was working in InDesign and I had all these cool ideas and she basically made them into logos and cool designs. And I said, hey, how did you how did you do that? And she said, oh, you know, just InDesign and Illustrator. And so mm. <laughs> basically I said, that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be doing that for the rest of my career. And then I just taught nice. myself after school, you know. Mm. That's refreshing. Do you know, I love those kind of stories as well, because it's like you get, I mean, that's just, it kind of resonates hopefully with some of the folks watching as well, because you're not necessarily have to, you know, go into traditional route, I'd say, or go into school, education, university. You can do it, you know, if you're doing it as a side hustle, you could do it as something you're learning on the weekends. And then when you're really into it and you want to make it a career, you can kind of, you know, push it and make it happen like yourself, which is, it's cool to her, man. Really, really cool to her. Yeah, I, you can kind of get into it. I encourage everybody to always try to learn new skills. You know, I'm always people that are my friends. They know that I'm probably doing that a bit too much, but uh, <laughs> you know, it, if it, it works, makes it life works. interesting. Yeah, <laughs> of course. And we've got some great comments in the chat as well. We've got uh, Penny who just said, um, "Even if you do go to school, the programs are always changing, so constant learning." Couldn't agree more. Definitely. Yeah, the, they're constantly changing. And, you know, now that we've got uh, Firefly, it's adding a whole new yes. thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to jump into a little Firefly today. Or okay. not Firefly, but in Illustrator's built-in AI. Built AI. Mm. Um, I've been learning to... I haven't done a ton with it yet, um, but the way that I like to use it currently is just to kind of get some things built out very mm. quickly just to test you know and then i kind of go back and and we have a team of artists and stuff and so using them to fully flesh things out but today we'll use it for some character boards so like now that i've designed the character art i can use mm. it to see if how ai can work with that and see if that can build something out nice I think as well, like especially if anyone's quite new watching these streams and, and new to these programs, I think that's the beauty where you can just experiment and have fun with it because there is a system and there's a method, but a lot of the time is actually just playing around and seeing what you can create, right? And then sharpening those skills within time, um, right. which is always refreshing to sort of see. Yeah, if we have time, we might try some generative fill in Adobe when we get into the mock-up phase. So we'll see uh, if we have time. Nice, nice. So I can see so, a, nice, a nice little selection there of different fonts on that artboard. It's looking good. Yeah, I think I feel pretty pretty solid about what we got here, like as concepts, you know, as things to build off of. And mm -hmm. so let's just, I'll, this is kind of how I do it is, like I said, I, I bring them over, feel them out, I, I feel, and then I quickly get into just moving things around. So how quickly can, like, this translate you know mm. to something um and just so everybody knows i, I guess hotkeys are not happening on your screen but i'll pull this up so that people can see i use a razor naga mouse oh, it's a gaming mouse okay That's and wild. it has 20 <laughs> buttons built into it 
And so all my shortcuts are built into my mouse. So I don't have to go and use both my hands Wow, okay. on the keyboard. So for instance, like zooming in is one, zooming out is two. Um, if I want to alt drag it, I hit 10 and I can alt drag this. Delete is nine, cut is five, Okay. paste is seven, undo is eight, paste in place is 12. So cut, paste in place. That's nuts. Um, yeah, so it makes streamlining really easy. And then like if I want the eyedropper, I press this like down button. You, It's anyway, it's just another button that I can press. <laughs> Yeah. Have you got have you have you got to feed it that much? Because I've never seen a mouse that's so robust in terms of like all of these things you gotta do. That's just that's just he's a Let gadget me, there, man. I love you know, it. I got a lot of cheese. I got a lot of cheese to feed this <laughs> man. I love that. And the comments as well. I mean, I'm loving and by the way, my friends, <clears throat> I will definitely read the comments because they are coming in thick and fast, Chris. So I'll make sure uh, I get yeah. them in there. I can see as well we have uh someone who you definitely remember, hopefully, from one of your streams. We've got Izzy, who I know you've had a, a Oh daily yeah. live stream as well. So Sweet. Izzy's coming through. Hey Izzy. Um and we've got experiences of people sharing um, you know, how they've kind of learned. Um, if they're self-taught or if they've gone through uni, um, we've got Izzy, who's an example. She did half and half, went to school with visuals for visual art and learned software there. Um, I also took a web design uh, certification, but design principles is self-taught. It's always nice to sort of hear other people's Yeah. different backgrounds when they kind of came into it. Very I love nice. hearing everybody's story and, you know, seeing how people get into the business because I just think it's such a unique, you know, industry because you have people from all different walks of life that are able to, you know, kind of come in and, and give their unique perspective on things. It's just so cool. So love to hear that. So I can see you're, uh, I'm always curious about when folks use art boards as well. I'm a bit messy when it, I mean, I, I won't even lie. I'm definitely quite messy when it comes to art boards, but you're, you're, I like how you kind of got yours kind of boxed in and kind of neatly rather than just to hide art board and just go wild, which I kind of tend to do, which is, I don't know if that's a good thing, but yeah. Oh, you know, I'm not going to act like I'm not a little bit messy. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> keep that house key, key, keep Yeah, it intact. <laughs> yeah. This is on forever, so I got to look, I got to look right, you know. Uh, Fresh desktop, I can see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fresh desktop. No, I keep <laughs> my desktop nice and clean. I keep my okay. desktop nice I'm and not clean. judging, by the way, because I know everyone's got their own method of, I've seen Mm-hmm. some <laughs> desktops in my time. I ain't going to pull names out, but it's, you know, if it works for them, it works for them. Right. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I love uh, my artboards. I do like to keep clean and I'm actually trying to practice scaling things down because I get a bit crazy with like basically how big I make my artboards. I make them unnecessarily big. Like I try to work in scale. And yeah so yeah like if I'm working on 11 by 11 box, I usually make it 11 and mm. I need to stop doing that <laughs> because my files get to be gigantic. i i was gonna say for the fault when you export it's just like uh there's a few numbers on <laughs> on the mb of that which is not you get those ones don't you which is yeah um yeah not useful not ideal not ideal um so i kind of like this and i'll let chat help me decide too so i really like this i almost just like it as is to some degree um it's really simple and kind of clean and funky and kind of has like an old vibe but so i'm gonna leave this alone for now and i'll probably revisit it in a second to do some tweaks maybe to the P or the O, work on this POR, because that's going to be a problem child everywhere. But with this, I want to tweak it a little bit more and I want to add in a symbol into this, basically. So one thing in the game is the briefcases are how people time travel. So, you know, Okay. they use the briefcase to time travel around and they use keys and stuff. And so I want to either put in like, a hourglass or a keyhole into a mark so that way i have a symbol within the brand itself Mm. and so i think this one will serve me the best for that and i don't like this r's i don't know i don't know the names of things You mean the way i don't it's like kind of coming down, you mean? Mm. yeah i just don't like all these other ones are nice and like crisp and this m i'm probably going to tweak and this e But this R really, it's not what I need for this. So I'm actually going to make it a P and I'm going to make my own custom
whatever are we've, we've got wade who's super yeah i just realized so wade uh one of our awesome moderators like it does say team pompo pompo pompow at the moment but obviously you got a method to why yeah it's the shot oh, yeah. we're gonna be working with it so yeah <laughs> we've yeah yeah covered. we've got you covered wade <laughs> what's up wade man good to see you or hear <laughs> you or you know chat with you or whatever this is <laughs> but i like how you mentioned as well like when you get those fonts and you can start to take out characters and then replace well not take out but replace them with you know say an icon or some sort of imagery where it's still legible clearly but you've also you know mixed in some imagery to make mm -hmm. it a bit more you know, on brand that's always quite nice especially with fonts where maybe it's like a sans serif where it's a bit more easier to maybe use smooth edges yeah I, I think that it's really nice to be able to swap things out or even just custom build like we're about to do um it just makes things more interesting you know like mm. i i like to hand off logos where the client can't just type it out you know even if it's really <laughs> yeah. close like okay there's your logo i, I typed it and it's done Mm -hmm. um unless the brand is more like packaging based then sometimes it's about the packaging and not the the logo type so true but and yours feel oh sorry go for it no no go ahead you're fine uh, no i was gonna say also you, i guess with scale i mean you mentioned packaging and my brain went to scale because that's an interesting one where you know you may find one of the characters you change it into an image or an icon but then when you scale it right down maybe even postage style stamp it just doesn't come out because of the print and the way you've kind of shaped it so I guess legibility is always kind of got to be the primary key, right? For for any sort of typeface you work with or or text. Yeah, legibility, man. That's that's the name of the game. You got to mm. scalability, legibility, like in today's age. And obviously, it's all according to like your client and application use. Like, so you got to make sure that what you're doing is making best use of the application you know like mm. if i'm working on something that's going to be seen at a long distance then i need to make sure that it scales really well if mm. i'm going to be working on something that is primarily like only going to be seen at a small distance then again it needs to scale well but if i'm working mm. on something that is probably like like a museum you know where you're really ever really gonna see the logo and maybe you just see the icon maybe you can get a little bit more mm -hmm. funky with it because like it's not totally necessary for people to always see the word mark so mm -hmm. there's like a lot of a lot of thought that has to go into it you know the methods to the madness we um we've got a question here as well who's just uh on the on the Behance chat, uh, which says, Chris, um, you mentioned a team of artists. Uh, can you talk about how you uh, work with that team for game development? Yeah, so for game development, it's very interesting. You know, we we basically hone in on specialties. So, like, if for instance, in this scenario, like you'll have someone that, that works on key art. You know, we'll have a certain number of cards or something that needs to be done. Um, art happens late in the game. You don't really want to do it too early because you want to work on the game development itself. But, mm. you know, let's say that we have 10 cards we need to do illustrations for. We'll do the key art and then develop out the rest. And then someone else is going to be working on iconography and UI UX. So people think that UI UX is only digital, but in a sense, it's actually very physical, especially in game design, because how you're interacting with the board, you're trying to get people to play as smoothly and as easily as they can. Um, mm. You want people to be able to understand what they're doing quickly. And so if you have a really bad UI system where someone doesn't understand the icons or there's too many icons, then that can start to disrupt game flow. And so we'll have some artists working on that, some working on, um, you know, the actual art of the game. Mm. And then you've got rule book. So it's just one thing at a time, but it's really nice to be able to have people you can trust to handle their business and do it well. And mm. you can, you know, it's got a good flow to it. Mm. Now that's solid. I guess as well, with, with you mentioned it's, it's, it's having a team of people around you that are, you know, like-minded, you know, in the space, but also enjoy what they do. Cause like, that's gotta be enjoyment, right. in what we do. 
with this line of work. And then I always think if you enjoy what you do, you'd probably do your best work. Um, which is which I think is also quite true. Yeah, you gotta you gotta have some fun, you know. If if you're not having fun, that's okay too. <laughs> it just makes I mean, it we're easier. creatives, right? <laughs> we're, yeah. being, we're being biased because obviously we're creatives, but yeah, it's um, and that's why we we do these streams, right? For anyone, it's not necessarily all just creative. You could be very much not in the creative space, but still watch and get curious and just play around. And you know, designers should be open for all. So, which is exactly it is. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you you know, you gotta. You got to be able to know what you enjoy and then try to hone in on that. You know, don't don't take things too seriously, but also understand that, like, what we're doing, it makes a difference in the world. But we're not like we're not at the hospital. So you know? <laughs> we're not saving lives. I love it. Yeah. Just, just grids and pixels. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the pixels can save lives, but. Yeah. Most of the time, <laughs> I want on a t-shirt, man. <laughs> yeah, Just look, like... you know, t-shirt though. <laughs> so talk us through what we're looking through now. I can see you've uh, made like a nice tessellated triangle shape though. Yeah, so this is obviously Black Widow's logo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> little Marvel pun there. there we little go. Marvel <laughs> pun. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't think that I would um, stick to that exactly. You know, mm. I'd probably try to give it a little bit of curve to it. Um, so... I I loved with this P, like it's kind of not too tall, it's not too short. And so what I did was I gave it a a, a hoop here, a bottom mm. curve that I feel like gives it a bit more flow, kind of allows it to feel a little bit cleaner. It's very mm. different than this logo, um, but I want to create something that, like I said, has just a small icon in it, in the O, that gives it a bit more depth. And I think the next thing I want to look at in chat, you know, let me know what y'all think if there's something else that would feel better, but I feel like probably something really simple like this kind of this key hole sort of scenario could be good. Mm. so it's one of those ones as well like whatever we create and design it it kind of goes into the ethos of the brand right well, on the brand but like kind of the concept of what you want to play whether it's like the idea of solving something i guess the idea of key lock unlocking getting into this kind of moment of like you know key almost key words that describe the design which is quite cool yeah i mean obviously escape rooms are a big thing now like i love escape rooms mm -hmm. and they use a lot of like keyholes kind of stuff and i feel like Although this is an hourglass, like it doesn't necessarily communicate. I mean, it communicates time, obviously, but it, it. I feel like a keyhole, even though it's not time, mm. sort of kind of resonates a bit easier with someone like, oh, I'm solving something, you know. Mm. And I oh, think yeah. that is a bit interesting. So... We've got a um a really good comment here from from Shine who uh who's also um on the Adobe Live space quite often. So hey Shine, I hope you're all good. Um, and she said, uh, would it be too on would it be too on the nose to play with the idea of a clock? Maybe abstract uh some clock hands or sort of tick marks potentially. No, I I love that idea. I love it. Thank you, Cheyenne. Let's do it. I <laughs> am all great. about. I can see. Uh... I can see we've got two chats off here, obviously the YouTube and the Behance. And we've got one comment from Shine that was on the YouTube and another um, from Josh who's on Behance. And he's also said as well, simple clock face hand. So I feel like our chat is somewhat in sync with different platforms, but we're all in the same space, which I like that. So see, this is what I, mean, I love about chat coming through in the clutch. audience is spoken. <laughs> this I is what that. I want. I want the chat. <laughs> yeah, I love doing... Um, I love doing sort of choose your own adventure stuff with chat. Like, I just think that's super fun. So mm -hmm. yeah. Like if anyone's got more ideas, please, 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 right, you know, right. go ahead and like, let's, let's see it. So. Whilst you're doing that as well, I'm just going to go back into, you know, the, the concept of the game. Cause it, 
I mean, I'm assuming as well, you're, you're massively into, well, I'm not assuming, we had a chat just before, so I know. <laughs> I know you're into your kind of games, right? And obviously you're into board games and, and video games and it's kind of nice maybe working on projects that kind of resonates with, I guess, your soul and your energy and, you know, you love doing this stuff. Um, yeah, do you kind of do more of this stuff in like your spare time when it comes to designing, you know, board games or this is kind of one-off, would you say? No, yeah. Board games has become a big passion of mine. Um, I've got a game that we kickstarted last year called Kraken Skulls, where I did a lot of the uh, artwork for it. You can check out pictures of it um, on Behance, or you can go to my game company. It's called Chris Couch Games. Um, you can check it out. It's going to be releasing in the spring. And I, what I love about games is that it allows you to be more creative and, and playing games, it's like you're entering into a whole new world. And in that world, someone has spent enough time in it to create a game and where you have a role, you have a purpose. Um, and I just think that that's so unique and something that we can learn from. <clears throat> and that's, that's one of the big reasons why I do it. Like I don't play games. I'm, a, I was a, soccer player in college like i have my athletic stint but i don't play games to win i play games to kind of get into a new world and so mm, okay that's kind of my that's kind of what i love about games that's like i've got to say that's like probably one of the first response i've heard i mean it's not like i go around asking people that question randomly but right in terms right. of why they why they like playing games that's an interesting um kind of throw at it because I guess I mean people might be competitive or not competitive it depends on your vibe right but I guess like you said being that transported into a new world that new kind of way of fr like framing how you're kind of working and playing is is cool man mm -hmm. yeah I, I think the creativity that goes into board games is honestly second to none in, this, in a lot of ways mm -hmm. like no the same amount of creativity that we get to experience there's a lot of people that make board games and they are just as creative, but they're just not like doing art, you know? And so mm. it's really cool to see people um, expressing their creativity, like in that way. And yeah. I just think it's, I just think it's fun. So. I've got to put this out there. I wouldn't be a good host if I didn't. So for anyone in the chat, what's your kind of favorite or go-to say board game? Put it in the chat and we'll, I want to see what kind of, depending on maybe where you're from and region, what kind of board games are out there. But I mean, obviously Christmas is gone. Maybe you had some family time, friends time. Let us know in the chat. Have you got a favorite board game? And there we go. I'm expecting, I hope you see a few Monopoly fans in the group, but who knows? I don't know. Oh yeah. I mean, hey, look, <laughs> there's a place I mean, for everything. I'm not, I'm no, I'm no uh, board game snob. Like, hey, you got to enjoy what you got to enjoy, you know? I mean, that can break up some happy homes to be fair, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It can, so, it can, yeah. it can do some damage. <laughs> Safe space, huh? so Safe cool. So space. I mean, it's looking good, man. What we're looking at now, I can see you got a few variants now of uh, tempora. Yeah, yeah, it's not tempopal, so that we're we're doing better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I really like this. I feel like the simplicity of it's really nice. Um, mm. And you know, thinking about type. So the slogan for the game, since everyone's playing as one character, the mm. slogan is time stands still for one so like no one says time stands still for no one mm, but i like that you know i'm thinking maybe this could be something that is interesting a little play, a little play on words there okay yeah so we'll see i'm gonna leave it here for now and um We've got a uh, a little comment here from where you said, I feel like the suitcase is important to the game. Uh, what about a simple suitcase silhouette punched out, punched out of the O? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah I like the way I'm thinking there. Yeah, and that's cool. We can do that, and then we can leave these and go into some character icons. Um, and cause we're going to be doing some character like icons that are suitcases. So, you know, okay. that, that could play really well into it. So nice. let's, let's do like a quick little simple suitcase here. And so take that, do the stroke. By the way, chat is popping off today. I'm loving, I'm loving, it. I can see a lot of folks kind of throwing in, uh, 
suggestions and like options of what you could do. So when you're looking, I'll definitely start throwing them out. But it's keep them coming, my friends, definitely. And obviously, I'll, I'll make sure I share them with Mr. Chris. Yeah, please. I love, like I said, I'm I'm about that life chat. So let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this could be sort of, you know, a suitcase scenario here. Mm. Whilst you're, so, whilst you're doing that oh mm -hmm. sorry, i was gonna just give, give the chat a nice little reminder because we're about half an hour into the stream uh, so you have just joined us a massive welcome my friends and today we have graphic designer mr chris porter and he's designing a brand for a custom time travel board game titled temporal uh so we're using Obadobe illustrator today um and again any questions you have for for chris throw those in the chat go for it chris sorry i interrupt you before no very good i was just gonna say that um one little tip and trick that I love that I don't know, people probably know it, but I I think it's important for everybody. To, you never know who's using things. But one thing I always struggled with was like lining things up. Right. So like. I'm true. I'm putting this in here and I'm trying to line up this suitcase with this. O. so I paste it in there and then I do this and then. Like if you double once they're both highlighted, if you click again on an object, you'll see this darker blue outline appear. Then you you're telling Illustrator that you want to align to this object. So I can go up here to my align and I can tell it to go into into the center, you know, and let's say that I wanted all of these because these are all separate letters at this point. So let's say that I wanted them all to align with the suitcase, highlight them all, click on the suitcase, hit that. Now, because again, they're all different, it messes it up, but just wanted to show that little tip in case anybody, you mm. know, didn't know that. So- I mean, that's cool to sort of see the different, I mean, whenever we have these, you know, streams, we've always got our, you know, uh, guests that come on and have their little tips and tricks so, which is awesome because, again, obviously, including myself, we can all kind of learn from it. So, uh, keep them coming if you've got any more, dudes, for sure. It's not yeah. wasting us, that's for sure. <laughs> um, I'm going to just do a really quick... These are two of my favorite types that I love, Aonic and RM New. Um, they're from yeah. a type foundry. can't remember the name. I'm blanking. Um, if I were to use these, I would license them. You need to buy a license for every time you use it. So mm -hmm. just something to keep in mind for everybody as you get your fonts, make sure you're getting your licenses. Um, but I don't know. I just, for some reason, I just really love their simplicity. Ooh, don't mm -hmm. want that. Probably want to make it a bit more. I like how it's well, strategically placed. So he's almost like the character's kind of looking into that direction as well. Just noticing mm -hmm. these little things. <laughs> but design yeah. nice. of course, we're gonna pick we're gonna pick up on the uh we gotta, things. <laughs> we gotta sell it. We gotta sell it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't personally like the underline tool in Illustrator because mm. if I'm gonna underline something, it's always gonna be in uh, InDesign, you know, that's the one where like I'm working with type and punctuality. So I just usually make my own underlines, but I really like, uh, I think I like the feel of this, you know, mm. it's kind of got some, some interest in it. Mm. So yeah, something like that. I don't think that type really works. By place. the way, just 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 totally putting it in there. If you get to a point and you want to do a uh, a poll, I mean, I know we're all um, what's I'm looking for. Basically, like a poll in the WLI, like, so we can all. So if you're in a good place and you're thinking, oh, all these free ones we like, we can put that in the chat and then we can see what folks are are digging. When you're in, you're in a good space, of course. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll do a poll. Um, all right, let's do one now. Let's do one now. Yeah. Yeah, let's do one now while we we can do a poll on this, and then I'll go yeah. into icons for some some uh character boards nice. so, so we do a little, little zoom in there we go contestant number one <laughs> just like right there. right hold on i gotta i gotta fix this real quick this is this is wrong this the the 
space in the current. You gotta fix your fix your favorite one, Chris. So strategic, so we now know which one. We are. <laughs> <laughs> I know your game, man. <laughs> no, I'm gonna fix two. I'm gonna fix two. Okay, so now it's <laughs> yeah. now it's fair. Now it's fair. Yeah, everyone, no cheating, no cheating, no cheating. There okay, so let me put like uh, let me put like a a one, two, and three over here. See, we're treating your chat. We're doing a poll. We always like to do a poll in the every live so we can uh, get you folks in, in involved as well. Hey, look, power to the people, chat. Look, I'm I'm <laughs> people the, for the people. So let's do it. Let's okay, go. which one of these? Can we uh, maybe zoom in just a little bit, just so each one, so we get a real feel. We can see one to three and then start. Yeah, yeah, one yeah. Two. Okay, yeah, so this nice. is number one here. Um, you know, we've got a bit more funky type. Let me give it a little bit more height here, so it's a bit more bold here. Okay, so we've got the funky type, a bit more geometric with the character. These are going to be the same type, but different usages of the O. So we've got the clock hands here, sort of indicating time. And then here we have the suitcase, which is prominent because that is what you're going to be using to time travel in the game. Nice. Well, we can see we've got our little poll link up. So what I'll do is I'll give it a few minutes, almost like the X Factor result. I'll give you a few minutes, Ooh. and then whilst that's marinating in the background, uh, we you jump into when you when you want, and then I'll uh, I'll make sure I put that in. I can already see people just putting in straight in the chat what number it is, but Great. we'll put it in the poll anyway. Well, but uh, I'll keep you in suspense for a few minutes, and then we'll we'll, okay. jump, we'll jump into. It. We'll... <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Now you're saying you're talking about marinating. Now you got me thinking about food. <laughs> All right. What's uh <laughs> is that the next part of project? Like just like branding for like we're just gonna we're packaging. gonna switch. We're just gonna brand some barbecue now that you some said seasoning, marinate. yeah. <laughs> yeah, just seasoning. We're switching gears. Oh uh, my guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> what uh what what's your favorite food? What's some food? Uh that London food over there. Give me some London food. London oh, you put me on the spot right now. London yeah. food. Uh-huh. Like traditional, like British food or just food that will get over here? Uh, food that you just, like. I don't want food, food that I like. that's nasty. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> I only like nasty food. No, I, um, do you know what's funny? Because so my, my wife is Spanish. Um, so we have a lot of Spanish dishes at home. And like, I'm a mm -hmm. sucker for like empanada, which is like kind of pastry. Definitely going off peace on the stream. We'll keep it back to design, I promise. But empanada, <laughs> which is like kind of like pastry. Um, mm -hmm. You can have like tuna. I love like fish as well. So you can have like tuna, uh, ham and cheese and all okay. different types. So uh, sort of pastry okay. based. Very healthy, clearly. Um, yeah, yeah, obviously. That's it. Uh, that's, uh, that's it. But uh, <laughs> if you come over, we'll treat you some empanada, dude. Don't worry. Oh, don't we'll get me started now. Look, I'm trying to go over and watch a Tottenham <laughs> game. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me? Tot you're, you're a Tottenham fan? I'm a Tottenham fan. Where, are, where oh, are you? Cr sorry. Are again, you an Arsenal let's not fan? Bring Clearly, clearly. Oh. So, <laughs> so my there heart, we go. My heart is broken. <laughs> for for any for any folks watching and don't know much about these, they're clearly they're not the most two rivaled teams you could possibly imagine. So our stream was going absolutely pleasant until yeah. Chris said that. But there we go. We'll, keep, we'll put it to our side and we'll go back to design and if this we can makes we can join forces. Better, this makes you feel yeah. better. My first uh, my first football game I watched in England was an Arsenal game. Thierry Henry when they beat oh, Everton. Yeah to yeah. get the invincible season and i thought i was going to be an arsenal fan i bought an arsenal watch and i had like <laughs> an arsenal watch but then i watched spurs play and they had edgar davids on their team and he would wear sunglasses and dreadlocks yeah on the field. yeah yeah and i said no nah, I, I got it that's my team if they let a guy <laughs> wear sunglasses on the field that's my team is that what sold it for you is that that's what, what sold, sold it me you? that's what sold me Okay. Got me. Right, we'll keep it we'll keep it back to design as well. Cause I feel like for yeah. anyone who's not into football, including my partner, uh is not a big fan. So I can see already <laughs> Oliver who said that's it, stream over. No, stream no, over. no, stream <laughs> just begin. No, no, we 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 dabbled in for a little bit, just a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah. We're back we're, into we're design. Back. We're, back. we're friends again. We're yeah. friends again. We'll just, we'll just we'll just end of it, that's all. But yeah, let's we'll jump into it. <laughs> so yeah, talk us through what we're looking at now, Mr. Chris. Yeah, so um what we're gonna do now is these are the different characters in the game. So in the game the different rivals or factions. The cabinet is actually the your players. So that's Alexan, the variants of Alexan. They're part of a group called the cabinet and they're protecting time. You've got Pendulum, who's the Alex's main rival. The division that are robots from the future. Keepsake, who's kind of like the star-crossed lover across time. Um, Weaver, who's a, mem a memory manipulator. And the syndicate, 
that are triplets that are bent on stealing across time. So what we need to do is create a few icons for these. I don't know if we'll have time to make all of them, <laughs> but we can do a couple. So if chat wants to throw in which ones they'd like to see done, we can do those and we can create a little character board for them. So like we can focus on two and we can nice. use Firefly to create some character or quick art for it and then put the character art in the icon uh, on a basically like a little character board and mm -hmm. we can kind of go from there. So maybe while nice. y'all throw in some names, I'm going to work on a symbol. So one of the main components of the game is called mm -hmm. time tunneling. So in the board, it's kind of made of these octagons. And in the game, you're sort of manipulating the octagons, turning it left and right, creating pathways for you to travel around the board. And that's called time tunneling. So we're going to make a little time tunnel icon, which I don't think will take too long, nice. hopefully. Nice. I'm curious to know, like, out of those, I don't know if it tells a lot about a person's personality, so I don't put you in a spot here, but out of those kind of key <laughs> for things, is there anything in there that you think, oh, that's kind of something I wouldn't mind having in terms of the abilities? Oh, in terms of abilities? You can tell a lot about, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like... <laughs> I think I would, I would like to, hmm, man, that's a good question. I think we'll come back I would, to that because yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that I would probably want to do the memory manipulator. That just seems really Ooh, mischievous. That's dark, man. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Chris, this this is like a it's like a dark turn. This stream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. let's be honest. That'd be super fun to be able to like. It would be awesome to be fair. It'd be yeah, yeah. it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I'd be good. I wouldn't be evil or you, no, you know. <laughs> Professor, don't want to turn professor into, x for chris <laughs> yeah you don't want you don't want me to turn into black mirror okay like <laughs> uh yeah good show but yeah um cool man i i can see by the way going back to the poll um it's very close so we've actually got a bit of a draw so we've put another link well the same link um for anyone who's just joined we've got a nice little poll um for a few designs we've got so definitely get them in because it's literally neck and neck with two of them so be that person hey. and uh have a final vote finish it off Okay. So one thing that I also have is um, I have these astute graphic plugins in here and they're really nice uh, to tie in with Illustrator. So this is called Mirror Me. So I can select something and immediately mirror it and connect it. Um, <clears throat> so I love these plugins. They're really, really nifty. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just going to create half of this icon and then I'm going to mirror it and connect it all together. So nice. hopefully it works out all right. I've got so, a, uh, just, uh, I can see a question from uh, Jer Groove. Cool name, man. Uh, is mm -hmm. it better to watch these live streams on hair or Behance? Uh, so either way, um, Jer Groove, get those questions if you're on Behance, get those questions in Behance, if YouTube, vice versa. And um, I've got both chats up. So I will, any questions you have on either channel, I will share them directly with Chris. So uh, yeah, to answer your question, there we go. Yeah, so I think what I want is sort of an icon where like kind of like a black hole where you've got this tunnel kind of going in on itself, if that makes sense. I don't mm -hmm. exactly know how to um, fully explain it, but I think it'll make sense when I finish. <laughs> I've got a sketch here to my left. Um or to my right that I'm that I'm looking at as a reference point. Mm. And so what I want to do is going to use offset path. And I saw Andrew Hockrattle do this use a different format. Um I'm just going to do it this way for now just because mm. the way that I'm doing it I think it'll work a bit better whilst you're uh whilst you're doing that and um it's always a skill to multitask i know so i appreciate mm -hmm. <laughs> i appreciate you for doing both you mentioned obviously you have your um your sketch there as a reference when you're doing designs in general do you kind of tend to do your drawings and then maybe scan them in and then use it as a reference or do you have to just jump on and design do you kind of have to work what's your kind of methodology when it comes to working on design 
Yeah, I think that I have a little bit of both. I recently started really getting into the idea of sketching. Um, like I said, I didn't grow up or I didn't go to school for, you know, I didn't take art classes. My mom was an artist. So cool. I kind of have the sketch in me a little bit, but my sketches are horrendous. So I have to really just work on getting an idea down and not trying to act like my sketch is going to be the be all end all. But I do like to sketch first and then kind of go into the design of it because I feel like it gives me just a route to focus on, you know, mm -hmm. and as long as I have that sort of route to focus on at least, at least I'm going a direction, you know, um the one thing about it what we do as a team at baby grand is we we have internal kickoffs and so it kind of helps us to hone in on a few things like you know we won't really get into um into the computer until we say hey like we like this direction you know you flesh this out i'll flesh this out you do that and so mm -hmm. it just makes it a bit easier to to manage but that's kind of how I feel about it. No, I, I I resonate as well. I mean, I see women. I work on a graphic designer too, and it's um sometimes it's it's tricky because obviously time is a luxury sometimes depending on your type of work and what you do, and you you have to sometimes jump on a screen and actually design. But it's nice to I think it's important. The nice the right word. It's important to to draw things out, to scamp it up, you know, digest it, reflect on it, and then you know, have like a reference point or at least a bit of plan of action. But everyone's different, right? Let us know in the chat. Are you do you pen to paper first and then design? Do you kind of have to jump on the design? You know, we want to know your your backgrounds. Let us know in in the chat what works for you. And again, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just what works for your sector. Yeah, yeah. What what do you feel like works for you? I love to hear people's process and um, mm. kind of what people feel like is best for them because it mm. it's really about that. Like you don't need to try to do what everyone else says like oh yeah this is the best thing to do like whatever it works well for your process is what you should be doing mm. this is looking awesome by the way dude i know it's part of the, the method but it's like looking uh it's like hypnotize me in right now on your screen <laughs> nice yeah i'm trying to figure out the best way to get these strokes <laughs> to to do what i want them to do but uh mm. you know we're we're getting somewhere i think um We've got just, a reverb who just said down the rabbit hole. That's the comment. There we go. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> but in a good way, there we go, because we were lost in the, the creativity. Um, it's actually a nice time to kind of mention as well in, in that space. If you are quite new to Adobe Live, uh, obviously, welcome, welcome. Um, and again, we're always looking out for folks to come and join us for these kind of guest spots. So you'll notice on the uh, tabs in the Hearts channel, uh, I think it's on YouTube maybe as well, uh, you can do a recommendation, whether it's for yourself or a friend. Uh, so again, if you want to have the opportunity to be on Featured, uh, drop it in the chat, drop it in the guest recommendation, I should say, in the tab, and hopefully you could be on the next stream. So uh, there we go. Yeah, I think this is pretty interesting here. Um, but what I'm realizing is I need to, I need to give some more depth to what's going on underneath this here. Like it mm. doesn't have, <clears throat> trying to explain, it doesn't have sort of like a growth to it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is maybe bring this up. Okay, I think that's more. It's cool to see the steps of this though. Like I've never really actually seen one of these before. So it's, it's interesting to obviously the the build up into how you've created this until now. Really interesting. Yeah, it's it's a funky thing. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> excuse me. But I think it's it's got a little bit of like weirdness to it that I like. <clears throat> Get rid of that half so uh, We've got some comments here from again, based on what we said about this idea of do you sketch first? Do you jump on screen? We've got Patrick sharing his experience. Who said, 
70% uh, of the time I sketch ideas first, the other 30% I have to picture in my head. So fleshed out um, and then I go right into Illustrator. So uh, yeah, it's always a, a balance, but um, thanks for sharing Patrick. Um, and again, my friends, any more uh, works best for you? Let us know in the chat. Yeah, Patrick's my guy. That's uh Oh, you know that's Patrick, a, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's my coworker. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> I okay. think it could be I guess it could be another Patrick, but Patrick Patrick Weber? Is that Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, there we go. One of my best friends. <clears throat> We've got It's nothing but positive energy in the stream, man. It's uh it's looking good. Looking good. Okay, so how do we feel about this idea in a sense right now? Like I think what I want to do is now that I've got this down, <clears throat> basically just try to. Oops, that's not what I want. Try to scale it, maybe, because it's a bit obviously it's pretty large right now. Mm. Let me fix this to be a right angle. And then. So like the idea is pretty nifty, but I think it's a bit too, like it, it's got some cool vibes to it, you know, like. Mm. <clears throat> it works quite here. well on the, um, on that sort of teal, on that sort of teal, completely off piece, that color, <laughs> in that kind of like uh, yellowy off, off, basically kind of yellowy by the background, it looks quite nice on it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah okay well yeah does chat have any um ideas for let's just like keep this over here for now and let's think about what another icon we can do for one of these these characters and then we can make a couple boards by the way, I never actually gave you the results from the oh yeah uh, from the poll, so, and actually it's it's the one that the uh, the hole just fell on number two, option two. So uh, there we I mean, go. I definitely definitely voted myself as well. I'm just going to say that out there. Yeah. I liked option two. So all right, these two are dead to me. They're dead. <laughs> Don't even want to look at them anymore. Just, Don't even want to look at no, them anymore. No. For anyone no. who picked one and three now, for like terrible people now, it's just like no, it's no. not good. No, they'll stay. They'll stay alive. Uh, we'll put them up in here in our memories. In our memories, you know. <laughs> no, our boards are free. You know, our boards are free. So of don't course, you don't need to course. get rid of them. And just to let you know, and this is a reminder for the chat, but also for yourself as well, Chris. We're about that hour into the mark. Uh, hour mark into the stream. Um, so if you have just joined us. Uh, where have you been, man? Um, well, lady, but they're all good for it. Um, yes, today we have uh, graphic designer Chris Porter, and he is designing a custom time travel board game by the name of Temporal using Adobe Illustrator. So we're in the thick of it right now. Um, we've got about 25 minutes or so. Um, so again, any sort of last minute questions, design process, things you want to see him do, questions, um, do let us know in, in either the chat on YouTube, Behance, and I will share that directly with him. Yeah, let's 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 make some uh let's make something for the hmm, we're going to do the division. All right, that's what we're going to make something for. Nice. And what I want to do is basically make sort of like a shield of some sort, I think. And like with some spears. <laughs> I don't know why, I just think like some spears that are like really geometric could be pretty. I want to make these really simple and okay. like really geometric and they can scale pretty easily. Um, so, and then add a little bit of depth to them somehow. So like, like maybe some kind of like Black that. Panther kind of vibes, no? I don't know. It's uh Oh, okay. okay. Wakanda Wakanda forever. I'm All just right. saying. We'll we'll do Wakanda tomorrow. <laughs> Wakanda tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is pretty neat. Um do this just to give me another set of it here. Mm. And group that. Group that. 
And I know this is not going to work the way I want it to, but that's okay. All right. Let's do it like that and give it a bit more space. Okay, okay. And for some reason, this didn't want to act appropriately when I merged them. So now it's now it's looking like it's acting correctly. All right, so it's all a bit of a trial and error, isn't it? Sometimes we have to kind of just like undo, play, undo, and then t get it kind of correct. Yeah, it's it really is. It feels like that sometimes. Like, okay, I need to make sure that I'm doing this the right way. What I feel. And then I'm like, okay, well, I, one of them doesn't act correctly, but the other one does. And so then I have yeah. to come back and, <laughs> you know, get, yeah. get them back here. Okay. I kind of like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Maybe... One and one. Okay. And now what I want to do is add a little bit of depth to this. And in order to do that, I'm just going to like get this stroke, make it white, and basically just, you know, okay, make it feel like it's sort of the shadow is there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Which other way should I do this? Uh, I guess I could just do it. For the other direction too. And this is just to test things out. You know, this wouldn't be what I I would actually build out the shadow a bit more in the final version, you know, where mm. it's not because if you pull this out, like you've got white there, you know. Yeah. But just to be able to test out some icons. Like, I feel like that's it. it. Yeah. And mm. then with this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to offset its path a bit, too. And then make that white. So that way I can choose exactly where, what path I want to offset. I'm just going to do the bottom. Whilst you're in the uh, <clears throat> thick of that, we've got a question. Or well, let me know when you're in a good space and I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so we've got a question from Joe Groove who said it's a two part question, but I'll ask the first one first. Um, what would you say has been the most helpful to make it in this career as a self taught? Um, hang on, there's an emoji over the last one. I don't know if I can't see that last one. <laughs> um, I apologize. Um, hang on, I'll get that chat back up in a second. I was so random. Like there was like a last little word there, but there was a love heart emoji. Whether yeah. that was me or whether that was someone else. Um, can you get that back in the chat, Jer Groove, please? Because it was a good question. But I feel like it was going along the lines of like any inspiration potentially for like self-taught. Or if I'm completely wrong, I do apologize, Jer Groove. Um, we'll get it back yeah. shortly. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, we'll definitely answer it. Um, what do y'all think about this icon? I feel like that's pretty nifty. You know, it's got some vibes to it. Just kind of like sort of you don't really know what's going on but it's got like a time sort of shield to it could be an hourglass glass instead but i like i like just the kind of interest intricacies of it a bit you mentioned the eye as well right is it the eye like the shape of the the site or was that am i making that up Did shape of the like, like yeah mm -hmm, like an eyeball kind of yeah yeah, like they can see across through time and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty, actually pretty interesting like that almost like, yeah, you know, it could be, if we do that, bring this here. I'm just going to jack it up, but let's do it anyway. Do you know what my brain's thinking? It probably won't work. And it's just like a random suggestion, but like, you know, in the middle, basically where the pupil of the eye would be, uh -huh. If there was a way that we would have the negative space in that part, but then how does that work? Because then how would the X's meet in the middle? Do you know what I mean? Like, I was just trying to think. I don't yeah, know, like if right. it was like uh, like that, you mean? Yeah, but but yeah, but it was just more of like a, 
where the crosses meet, but then that's what the negative space would be. So you know that's the pupil, but then mm-hmm. in my head, in my head, it sounds like a plan until you have to actually design it, and you're like, yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I feel like I'll we'd have to have a car. <laughs> <Yeah>, exactly. <laughs> so, so random. Oh my gosh. You know, we could we could make it filled and then maybe we could use Yeah. Use then this could be like the white portion. Mm. So um although this guy is just not having a day. Here we go. I gotta get them straightened up a bit. Just for the sake of this, we'll just we'll just keep it moving. Cool. I'm definitely getting like um uh pirate eye patch then vibes now when you uh Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what I'll do is I want to show off a little bit of kind of how we would create a player board. Um cool. and so like let's just say that this was our player board and we're just gonna take the same outline background situation we got going on here mm. align the artboard boom boom and come and do that we're going to send it to the back now but i want the outline to be in front that way i can put my artwork person kind of underneath it and so this could be sort of um and let's let's go ahead and just make this quickly expanded. That way I can then use the shape builder tool to come in and just get rid of all this that I don't want just for the sake of testing this out. So now I've got a full gone shape. So that is yeah. this is now like their faction, you know, which is pretty cool. Okay. Okay. So just a little heads up, we've got about 20 minutes or so just so we're you're in a good space for timing. <clears throat> Sweet. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so let's uh spring. Well, that type is not as maybe we'll do something a bit more funky for the names. So that with the nice. so we'll go here. Alexand. Is this got different weights to it? Oh, Ooh, okay. <laughs> Give I me some of that. Cool. Give me some <laughs> of that. This is what I wanted right there. Just some funky, thin. Cool. Mix it up. By so, the way, when you're in a good place, you let me know when you're in a good place. We got that question. It's, it's revived itself. That question. The one. Oh, that sweet. I, yeah, go the ahead. Emoji was in the way. Cool. I can. Um, I can double task. No, better than me than dude, <laughs> for sure. Uh, so we've got the question back from Jared Groove, uh, sorry about before, who said, well, what would you say has been the most helpful to make it in this career as a self-taught designer? So it's a two-part question, but that's the first part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the most helpful thing I feel has been practice. Um, and so one of the things that I did was when I first started learning I understood that it's going to take a while for me to learn. And so I just got the BMW logo and then the Volkswagen logo, or no, it was a Volkswagen logo. And I remade the Volkswagen logo a hundred times <laughs> just to learn the program. You know, how quickly can I do it? It was kind of like a beat your own score kind of thing. And then <laughs> I started creating clients for myself. Like, okay, I'm going to do a beer. That's this, or I'm going to do a company that, specializes in robotics or specializes in making knives or something. And I just would practice. And so creating those fake case studies helped me to grow quickly. And so now that I'm in the world and I've established a career being self-taught, I my biggest advice is to one, practice and when you're getting started. And then two, mm -hmm. I would say is to not be afraid to collaborate. Um, always look for new ways to work with people to learn new things. And so that has helped me tremendously in basically learning new skills, um, mm -hmm. getting better at what I'm doing. I'm teaching people and iron sharpens iron, you know, go ahead and, and learn to make friends with people with other designers and continue to grow. So those have been two big things for me. Nice. 
Nice. If you want a more practical answer of like business, throw it in the chat and I can give you like some business advice. <laughs> no, some spitting some gems to us, man. Not the right word. I like, get some gems to us to say. Um, so, and the second part to that question as well, uh, again, from Joe Groove, who said, what would you recommend, was kind of touched on it before, what would you recommend to focus on um, given the turmoil happening on the field right now? So I guess in the current climate, it's difficult out there, especially when you get into that space. Is there anything you'd recommend to kind of focus in and hone in on? Right now, just with like trends and stuff? Uh, I, yeah, I hope so. I mean, I, I let us know a bit more if you mean that, uh, to Joe Groove. But um, I guess so. I mean, I, I kind of interpret that as like, yeah, there's a lot going on right now. How do you kind of focus, kind of like make your niche your craft, if that's possible? Um, mm. Kind of hone in on that. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, what's your thoughts on that? I'll, I'll put some ideas as well. Um, That's an interesting question. I, I feel like people get caught up in being specialists a bit. Like, mm. okay, I'm going to be an illustrator and all I do is illustration. I'm going to be this and all I do is that. Um, I think there's something to be said about just like having multi-faceted skills. So you can kind of jump ship if you need mm. to. You can be one of those utility knives. You know, I think there's a lot of benefit to that. That's helped me a ton. <laughs> like my first job going freelance was doing video. Like that was my first client. Okay. Was doing a big video job and I had to learn animation. And then I mm. did this great thing for this our public transportation company mm. and that got me a lot of new clients and then i got to bring in branding into those worlds so i think mm. not being so focused on only being a one you know one trick pony <laughs> yeah so. no that makes total sense i mean that's that's i kind of echo that fully i think um and also if you find that you're trying different things and it's not for you at least you're gonna say well actually you've given it a shot right um mm -hmm. i always find like i mean i work in mainly print editorial but Again, a little bit of skills in Premiere Pro. And you'd be surprised where if you're able to, when you finish a piece of work and maybe you do a mock-up in Photoshop and then maybe you do a very slight video in Premiere Pro and that that's your kind of way of, you know, executing and showcasing your design, whether it's on the video. It's those little things that you could do, which kind of adds up. Um, so you haven't got to be an absolute expert in, in the field, but kind of be knowing the basics. And again, I'll be a terrible host, but I didn't mention this is, you can learn these basics again from watching the Adobe Lives and, and these streams like yourselves, right? To get a feel for how people do it um, and sort of seeing it working in the, in the, in the flesh. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, that's, that's part of it. So one thing I'll come back to this real quick is, you know, I was over here working in this AI, but I had not selected my, <laughs> my artwork. So people are probably like, oh, these are some really ridiculous looking results. Let's see if I get a little bit better result now that I've selected the actual, <laughs> the actual art. Right, kind of like Wally, Wally two point oh. Yeah, uh, Wally, yeah. Wally. super Wally. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'll get something. Yeah, so that feel, hey, that's starting to okay. feel a bit more like the style, right? Like, yeah, cool. Okay, so it's not necessarily like a final product by any means. So look, he's a, he going on vacation. He's not even. He's <laughs> Barbados is the next about. flight. Boom. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I think something like this is pretty interesting, right? Like, it just starts to give you a quick look at, you know, um, quick look at some artboard type stuff. So we've got that. We can, we've got this kind of character board. We might say the syndicate here, right? And so, mm -hmm. and then on this board, we probably want to have some sort of like trackers. So, you know, we'll have space for like uh, component trackers here. Um, I press Command D, and that allows me to multiply, like, so. I create this, I feel good about its position, and then I alt drag, and then I hit command D and it makes the same motion that I just did as many times as I want, as long as I do it uh, consecutively. Nice. So I'll put that there as like a reference point for me, is like, okay, I wanna put like some sort of component tracker or whatever right here. So let's hit save on this and let's just make a quick box mockup with our last nice. few minutes. Um, 
Yeah, you read my mind. Cause we got the, like a nice little 10 minutes, but we'll make sure we get some space to do this. And then of course, a little wrap up to who, you know, what you did, but also how can folks, you know, find out more about you as well, but uh, 10 solid minutes and we'll make it work. Sweet. So here we go. So now it starts just to add like a mm. really cool bit to it. Right. Um, it just makes it feel real. So this mm -hmm. is our logo. This is the logo for my company, Chris Couch Games. And so what we do is we have like a little bu bubble here that we put at the lower bit mm. of the game, just like as a brand mark. Obviously, this is just to test things out. But mm. so this starts to feel pretty, pretty neat, right? Like, okay, cool. Clean, this man. is, yeah, really nice. And so um, we'll leave it off for now. We might change the color of it so that way it matches more. So this is in my library which is a key part of my design flow process. And let's say I want to edit this. So I double click it and now I'm editing it live in the library. And the reason I'll do that is let me go back in here and I can show y'all exactly why it's cool. So say I place it in there. Uh, let's say it's there. I'm going to save that. Come back here. You can see it's updated, but mm. man, like it's just not the right color. Um, I want it to match my design. So I'm going to copy this hex code, come back here, change that, and then I'm going to save that. And then when I come here, you can see it's updated. And so now it's updated to the automatically without me having to do anything, it's updated. Right. So maybe I want to have it like more over here or something so it's not fully blended in. And then I can hit save. And now it's updated there. Instead of having to go in, rasterize this, do the paintbrush and drop it in. Just use the library. It's going to mm -hmm. update much quicker, much smoother, <clears throat> everything like that. Okay. So, you know, we'll, we'll get rid of that artwork for now. I'm going to copy this logo because that's our main logo. Mm -hmm. Come back. We need to do the box sides. So I'm going to do that and we're going to scale it up. Um, Go there. I don't want that background to be that. So I'm actually going to copy that just for the sake of this, even though this isn't exactly the way you would want to do it. Okay, we're going to do it the right way. All right, so we're going to get a white. Go there. Put that behind. And then I need to get this hex code there. Change that to there. Let's actually get this to be correct on the edges. Cool. We'll go up here to stroke, make it white. And there we go. Now it's actually working the nice. right way um clean and i know this this white um i know this sort of white thing is going on with the oh we're getting sorry if y'all are hearing something we're getting an emergency alert because we just got a snowstorm here in memphis <laughs> um, oh stay safe brother stay safe yeah. brother. <laughs> we're good uh okay, cool. so let's just bring let's just bring this icon in here as a way of like kind of showing more branding. So what we might do is we we would put like all the different icons on the sides of the box, or we might put like the player count or something. Mm. But for the sake of getting this graphic to look pretty cool, we'll just put that here on each one. Now we've got like a pretty dope box. I mean, that's nice. that's pretty awesome. It's solid. <clears throat> it's, it's always nice as well to see it in context right because it's one thing when it's flat and it's on illustrator and it's a, a bit of when you see it in the context of what the final product will be it just i mean even when you send to clients right as well i don't know if you find mm -hmm. it but it just resonates a lot more clear in their mind of how you want it to look um, yeah yeah i always send mock-ups to clients always use that and then so this has got a cool filter like a dirty filter kind of like <laughs> you know add some grain to it these kind of things help sell your sell your work to your clients and make people feel like, oh, it's real. You know, I can mm. I can imagine it. So definitely highly it recommend is. doing that. 
Well, the question is, Chris, are you, are you going to make it make it into production, man? We're going to be having like sales, and people be wanting to knock down your door to get a copy of this game. And oh yeah, it's a it real. Yeah. This is a real okay. game that I'm concepting. So all of this is is real stuff. Yeah. So um, you'll probably see this kind of come to Kickstarter in the year or so, I imagine. Nice. Um, yeah. It's but this is the first step. You're getting to see a little bit of the process. Well, remember us little guys, right? When you when you make it when you make it into the <laughs> Hollywood Hollywood Hall of Fame, and um, you're in a good place. But it's been nice to sort of see. Like, well super inspiring I should say as well to even see the design process but I mean, we've got a nice little five minutes but maybe we could do like a little recap of what we've done um to today but also as well how folks can find out a bit more about you as well and social media so we can kind of wrap on that the last five minutes yeah yeah let's go a little recap spin so what we did first was we wanted to look at a logo a primary logo for this board game called uh, temporal so we explored different fonts and typography we found a few we liked, we edited them down and kind of created this cool symbol within it. You know, we we created this custom R with this, brought some other letters from other fonts into it and used chat to generate some really cool ideas. We put a suitcase and a clock and then we had this character art and we created a kind of a box cover. We put our slogan in there and we had chat vote on which one they preferred the best. They chose this one here with the clock, which I think is really dope. And so then we started working on another icon. So this is one that we didn't really get a chance to fully flesh out, but we might throw it on the box real quick and see how it feels. It needs to be thick like this, but we got a sense of a time tunnel in a sense. Um, mm -hmm. And then we worked on another icon for something, one of the characters uh, called the syndicate, which, or it could be the division or whatever it is. But we worked on uh, this kind of cool icon, which would be a faction, brought some character art, made a little small character board. Then we used AI uh, in Illustrator to generate just something real quick to test it out, to get a feel like, okay, this is starting to feel like it could be something cool. And we brought all that into Photoshop, into a box mockup, and we created just a really quick, simple box mockup. So it feels real. We have something to promote the game going forward. While we work on the whole design, we have this to promote. So say, hey, look, we're working on this game called Temporal uh, or Temporal. See, I did it one time. And um, <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, we've got this really great thing that we can share with people. So nice, nah, come together. And that's just quite funny because when you're going through the, the steps just done, there's something quite, um, I can't think of the right word now, but you've, you've generated a robot using AI. I don't know. There's like a part of like a what came first, chicken or the egg kind of moment. Maybe it's just my brain. Oh, but, man. Yeah, it, it works well. I'm so meta. Yeah. I got to say, I'm just so meta right now. <laughs> We're in that universe. Um, yeah. So just to so make sure that we have, how can folks know a bit about yourself? Have any sort of going back to the beginning, but like your social media, do you want to plug before we wrap up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you can follow my personal social at uh, CP23. It's spelled out. That's on my uh, personals on every platform if you're interested in seeing all the work that we're doing at baby grand follow us at b b y g r n d basically take out the vowels <laughs> um and <laughs> you can go to babygrand.co and see more of our work and that's got all of, our, all of our links and stuff i'm on behance i've got some projects on there you can message me on dribble on instagram pretty much any social media i'm a part of um this is my game cracking skulls that'll be releasing hmm. in the spring so this is, I did all the illustration and branding and stuff for this. If you're interested in learning about board games, you can go to chriscouch.games uh, online or on social media and you can find me there. So yeah, you know, nice. it's it's a really fun little game. It's very cutesy and artwork. And so. Um, yeah, I want to definitely check that out, but I didn't know you actually created all these things and it's it's cool. And thanks for bringing us into your world and sort of seeing your process. And honestly, dude, it's been my pleasure to host you. I know we said that we haven't had a chance to connect, <laughs> but we've finally done our stream together, man. And hopefully yeah. we'll, do, we'll do a few more. Um, so my friends, I mean, I can also, I can see as well, our moderators have put in all your links in the chat as well. So I'm sure we'll have folks coming your direction. But uh, but Chris, my friend, it's it's that time. But, uh, but thank you so much for... <laughs> For blessing us with your presence and showing us your design process it has been my pleasure um and of course to the folks that are watching in the stream wherever you're kind of tuning in from thank you for coming through thank you to our moderators um and just a little reminder up next we're going to get ready for an inspiring journey 
into the dynamic world of design education with design educator Meg Lewis. So join her while she's uh, illuminating Adobe Live Spotlight, where we'll delve into Meg's unique approach to design, teaching, and creativity. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, I can see as well popping up, Chris, on the chat. Everyone's saying thanks, loving it, loving it, emoji. So we've all enjoyed it, dude. I hope you have too, man. Sweet. Yeah, this is the best. And stay tuned for Meg. Meg is the bomb. So definitely want to stay tuned for her. I appreciate everybody joining in chat. Um, let's do it again. Let's do it again soon. We'll make it happen. All right, my friends, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you very soon. Ciao. See ya.